Hello and welcome to Five Elements Living TV. I'm Shelby Conley, acupuncturist at Five Elements Living. And today we are interviewing Brooke Baker. She works for the Healing Medical Practice. She's a nurse practitioner, family practitioner. And so we were just discussing how appropriate it is for titles. So what would you like to be called? Uh, I actually prefer everyone to just call me Brooke. Uh, okay. People get really confused because I don't have an MD after my name. So mm -hmm. when um, we're in the office, Dr. Healy is Dr. Healy, and I'm usually Brooke. Some people call me Dr. Brooke, but I try to correct them. <laughs> but they at least know they want you. Yes. They've had the experience with you, and they feel safe with you, yes. and you have all of their charts, so they, they probably feel really good in your care. So, yeah. so full disclosure... Rook is my nurse practitioner, and I deeply appreciate um, her knowledge and the respect that she gives me as well, being an acupuncturist. But the topic today is um, interprofessional communication. So we were just talking about St. Lawrence Health Systems, which has the hospital, as well as they have detox, they have a mental health unit. Mm -hmm. They're pretty widespread. Um, and most of the doctors and their practices, so that's the doctors, the PAs, and the nurse practitioners work under that umbrella. Right. Except for Healy Medical Practice. Right. So can you tell me a little bit about, um, first of all, the difference, like what it looks like from working in a hospital to working in a private practice? Right. So um, Dr. Healy started his practice many years ago. He was actually my doctor when I was growing up, so it's been an interesting experience. Um, but so we are one of the only private practice clinics available. There's Dr. Healy, um, myself, and a PA and another nurse practitioner. In so, that office. Yes, yep. in that office. And we have one in Potsdam and Canton. Um, so the biggest difference is uh, everything is done by Dr. Healy. So it's a different set of rules. I think it's more lenient, um, a little more freedom, um, and... When, when you're in the hospital, I feel like it's more bureaucratic. Um, mm -hmm. there, there are different aspects to it. I don't think there's much to do with care. I think we still get our patients into the same tertiary clinics, into the same specialist just as quickly as if mm -hmm. we were in St. Lawrence Health System. Mm -hmm. Our labs go through St. Lawrence Health System. Our supplies come from them or independent uh, medical supply companies. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the biggest difference is that we just have a little more freedom in, in how we care for people that aren't always um, the same bureaucratic rules. Sure. Do you get treated the same way, such as maybe somebody that's under the umbrella, if one of their nurse practitioners sent for blood work or for x-rays, do you get the same respect? I believe so in that sense, and who <laughs> orders. So it's interesting when we were talking about this a little prior. Um, I've been with Dr. Healy's office for almost a year and a half now, and it took me an entire year to get my lab results to come back to me from the hospital. Mm. Whether that's a technological issue or, or a respect issue, like you said, I'm not sure. But all of my results um, would go to Dr. Healy instead of me. So it left me in this dilemma of creating this crazy tracker in how to get back to my patients on time. Because mm -hmm. as, as a nurse practitioner, I pride myself on contacting people back, whether it's through my nurses or myself. Mm -hmm. If it's um, an abnormal lab, regular, I want you to know what our next step is. Yeah. Um, I have always felt that that practice has had really wonderful communication mm -hmm. with patients. And then if I needed anything done under St. Lawrence Health Systems, I never felt that the communication or collaboration was ever... A problem but that's how I experience as a patient right. yeah I think so there are certain cases and it's just like a couple of frustrating things for me and I think it's it's not necessarily um, respect from the system but I think it's on title so mm -hmm. there have been a few cases where I've worked up patients um, I've diagnosed them it's something big I have referred them out but but the referring provider instead of calling me will call um, my my doctor that I work with mm -hmm. and so it's kind of crossing wires so it's just a certain certain issue there that's that's somewhat bothersome but I do see does Dr. Healy really correct it uh not always not, not always. always yeah he yeah. um I think he sees a lot of people mm -hmm. um and I hate to say that first but sometimes it's like when you're when you're done with that first appointment you're on to your next yes. you're on to your next Yes. Um, so it's not always in the forefront of your mind mm -hmm. unless something really big is going on. But Dr. Heal and I collaborate all the time. Mm -hmm. I feel 
very comfortable going to him with questions because I'm still new. And as he says, in the world of medicine, there's going to be stuff that you run into that you just don't know. And you need, you need another set of eyes or another brain to kind of bounce things off. But I've never once felt disrespected by Dr. Healy. Mm -hmm. um, I feel completely comfortable going to him with questions and just as a, a so professional. So if he, if he doesn't do something, it's because he forgot or he was too busy. It wasn't that he thought he couldn't communicate. Yeah, to it's more so um, that doctors will reach out to him. I think it's because of, of their relationship. He's mm -hmm. kind of a pillar in the healthcare community here. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's frustrating for me because my name is clearly on it. Please call me because I'm the provider, but Dr. Healy will always relay information to me. So that is, so that's, that's the communication within your office. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it's pretty good. Does it travel down is even to the people, the staff out front and the nurses? Yeah. That's a good communication. Yeah. I think that works really well. We're a pretty tight knit little office community. Yeah. Um, there are certain things, uh, like Dr. Healy and I, answer questions a little differently. Like I prefer everything electronically, so most people will send um, all of our patient messages and requests and uh, lab results electronically, but Dr. Healy likes everything written out. So that's a different uh, different aspect in our communication. I'm more so all online based <laughs> and he likes that paper copy. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just one little different aspect of things too. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's generational mm -hmm. too and yeah. it's the way you've always done it and even though it might be faster to him it wouldn't be just yeah. because of you've always done yeah. it. His volume of patients is a lot higher than mine too. I get I always request some some longer appointments for people sure. um, so it's easier for him to have everything kind of out in front of him instead of sitting sitting down on the laptop trying to answer questions too. Mm -hmm. Oh absolutely. Mm -hmm. So again under the umbrella do you have any um, Referring into that, like if there is a, a gastrointestinal or there is um, the cardiac, you know, something like that, is there any problems going back and forth from being a private practice into? So not really. Um, I think they're very receptive of us. Um, I don't think our patients get in any quicker or any slower versus in the system. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can be a little easier, like if you're being sent from the emergency department, um, because those people, there's always an on-call specialist there, so they can lay eyes on the patient. Um, they're usually the ones that are the physicians or, or providers that are going to see them, so sometimes they get in a little sooner than that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I don't think there's a big issue. Um, I think a couple, specifically like the rheumatology office and infectious disease, I've reached out to those providers on questions or mutual patients, mm -hmm. and I've gotten excellent um, responses from them and even collaboration of like treating them prior to getting into the, the specialty clinics. Mm -hmm. um, and most of the offices will send back their visit summaries to us, so that's one issue that can sometimes be difficult. Um, the providers actually have to remember to to send it through to our office, mm -hmm. whereas if you were in the St. Lawrence Health System, everything is kind of there. Yes. Yeah. Well, the thing that I, I love about the private practice still being there is because you right, you do have the same similar staff all the mm -hmm. time. When when I, what I've observed in the umbrella of St. Lawrence Health Systems it's not always the same person that answers the phone. It's yeah. not the same nurse. It's yeah. not the, the practitioner. They move around a lot. And mm -hmm. so what I love about your practice is I, I would never expect you to have a memory without looking at paper of what somebody came right. in with, but you never make us feel that way. Right. You always make us feel like, oh, yes, I remember that. I mean, I would never assume yeah. it, but because it's the same over and over, you have right. that that bonding with. So so as you refer out to, to Western medical, is there a time um, that you would refer out to maybe acupuncture such as myself, maybe chiropractic, um, nutrition, anything like that, that. Yeah, I honestly do all the time. So that's one big thing I think um, I have as a family nurse practitioner. So I was a nurse before. So my whole background is really uh, treating a patient holistically. Mm -hmm. So it's mind, body, spirit. Um, so I don't look at people as, all right, you need this pill, you're done, let's go on. Um, so my biggest thing that I refer out for people is really chronic pain. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of my research in graduate school was about chronic pain and the opioid epidemic. So my study was on like cognitive behavioral therapy and how that impacted mm -hmm. um, chronic pain and opioid use. And in my research, I come across massage therapy, physical therapy, chiropractic care, acupuncture, 
um, lots of different things. So I'm a huge fan of that. I try to push people. I've actually referred some people here, so hopefully <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you get some patients from that. But it's really chronic pain, um, mental health I will sometimes mm -hmm. refer, migraines, lots of different things. But I, I like to utilize all my resources available. Yeah, that's it, it, and, and it's appreciated for mm -hmm. sure. And I think uh, Dr. Healy and I started our practices together 24 mm -hmm. years ago. We were across the street from each other. And so I would refer a lot to him as well because he right. was new and I thought he would have fresh eyes and he would have. So he was, he's always, and his staff has always been, I would say, good to me because mm -hmm. I've always referred to him as well. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's, it's even ground by any means, but it was, it was, I've never come up to a wall with, with the practice right. at all. And I've always appreciated, again, the communication. Um, if, if somebody had to call to refer or I needed to call and just say, I saw something that I really think, you know, you should pay attention right. to or something. It was always like, thank you for pointing it out. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll look into this. So I just, I'm extremely thankful. So I appreciate you coming too. It's a beautiful day. And yeah, I know no you're, problem. you. I've seen your schedule. So I know <laughs> you are, you are full out and you are really appreciated by your um, patients. Um, I can say that I, I treat a lot of, 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 of your patients and they're so thankful for your listening and for your promptness with with communication. So. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Well, thank you for coming. Welcome. <laughs>